Hello and welcome to this final first look exploring session looking at the wise woman of Hogsden, uh, a comedy sundry times acted with great applause by Thomas Hayward, uh, printed in 1638 and performed at some point prior to that. It's quite a wide dating range. Stick a pin. Go for it. Um, uh, we are going from Act 4, Scene 3, uh, in the version of the script that we have here. Uh, I'm fairly certain that's accurate. And, um, yeah, we're going to find out whether the play is going to horribly disappoint us or whether it's all going to end up delightfully. Uh, we've really enjoyed uh, most of the play, uh, apart from the, the random sudden outburst of uh, uh, huge appalling amount of racism in a very, very confined space of the text last session. I'm hoping that won't happen again this session, but uh, I, I've just put a little warning in now just in case it does pop up. Uh, we read these cold, so we really don't know what we're getting. Uh, so reading today uh, with that, that warning in place, um, <laughs> though, you know, let's be honest, the patriarchy is going to probably slap us around the face rather a lot. So uh, that's, that's very much in place as well. Um, but that's, that's pretty much par for the course with comedies. Uh, reading Joseph, Sir Boniface and Father is... A leaky chapel actor and translator uh, between Greece and the UK. Uh, reading uh, Tabor and Sir Harry is... Hi, I'm Eric and I'm looking for the snacks that I had earlier, but I don't know where they are. Uh, and reading uh, Boyster, Giles, Old Chartley and Epilogue is... Hello, Dan, actor, based in Montpellier, France. Uh, reading uh, a Wise Woman and Gratiana is... Hi, my name's Elizabeth Demissu and I'm an author based in sunny Essex. Uh, reading uh, Second Loose and Herringfield is... Hello, my name is Lynn Freitas. I'm coming to you from the dark and damp Pacific Northwest of the United States. Um... I'm jealous of the sun. Or envious, <laughs> rather. Uh, reading Loose and Chartley is... Sarah Blake, coming to you from snowy Germany. Mm -hmm. And uh, reading Censor, coming from frosty Suffolk, is... It's Alan, and no icing in southeast Iceland. And I'm your host, Robert Crichton. I'll be reading stage directions and leaping in if I have messed up the doubling. I will also probably be glitching because my video seems to be doing all sorts of terrible things. Uh, so my laptop's <laughs> probably about to die. That's probably what's going on there. Uh, thought it was everyone yesterday, but no, it looks like it's just me. Uh, so I may disappear uh, randomly at uh, intervals. Uh, without further ado, we're going to go into Act 4, Scene 3. Enter Sensor... Once again, doing his master of disguise routine, uh, dressed like a serving man. Now or never, look about thee, censor. Tomorrow is thy, the marriage day, which, to prevent, lie not within the compass of my apprehension. Therefore, I have thus disguised myself, to go to the looming woman's, the fortune tellers, the anything, the nothing. This, over against Mother Redcaps, is a house. I'll knock! And enter second loose in her boy's shape. My boy's shape. Who's there? What would you have? I would speak with the wise gentlewoman of the house. Oh, be like you have lost someone. You're in the wrong, sweet youth. I am somewhat thick of hearing. Pray you speak out. I say I have not lost anything but wit and time, and neither of those she can help me to. And you be then you be like are crossed in love and come to know what success you shall have. Thou tit it, sweet lad. Thou tit it. What it is you say, sir. Thou hast hit it. Uh, oh, I pray, come in. I'll bring you to my mistress. And that ends that scene. But we're going to run on to the next ones. Act four, scene four. Enter Luce and Joseph. Loose number one. This is the house. Knock, Joseph. My business craves dispatch. Now am I as angry as thou art timorous, and now to vent the next thing I meet. Oh, tis the door. Knocks. Enter Who's there? second loose. Okay. Who's there? What are you? A maid and a wife. And that would grieve any wench to be so... 
I know that by myself, not loose. A boy, where's your mistress? In some private talk with a gentleman. I'll fetch her to you presently. Exit second loose. If she and you see me not, I am but dead. I shall be made a byword to the world, the scorn of women, and my father's shame. Enter the wise woman and censor. You tell me your name is censor. I knew it before, and that Chartley is to be married. I could have told it you. Married? Tomorrow? Or me? Aye, but you tell me that Chartley before tomorrow shall be disappointed of his. Make that good. Thou shalt have twenty angels. I'll do it. Stand aside. I'll have but a word or two with this gentlewoman, and I am for you presently. And they whisper. My husband, marry another wife tomorrow. No changeable destiny. No sooner married to him, but instantly to lose him. In her death it grieves me so much that I am a wife, but that I am a maid, too. To carry one of them well is as much as any is bound to do. But to be tied to both is more than flesh and blood can endure. Well, trust to me. And I will sell all things straight. Enter Boyster. Where's this witch, this hag, this beldam, this, this wizard? Ah, and have I found thee? Thus then will I tear, mumble, and maul thee. Help, help, and if you be a gentleman. But bear this rudeness. He that touches her draws against me. You, sir, apply thou, that shall be tried. Help, help. depart help. them. Help, help. help. With patience, hear her speak. Now, Trot, now, Granam, what canst thou say for thyself? What, Luce, here be patient and put, the, put up them. She must not see the end. Then truce on all sides, if we come for counsel. Let us with patience hear it. Then first to me. You would prevent young Chartley's marriage? You shall. Hark in your ear. It pleaseth me. You forestall Gratiana's wedding, tis but thus. I'll do it. You would enjoy Luce as your wife and lie with her tomorrow night. Hark in your ear. Piat. Away, you shall enjoy him. You are married. Luce, away, you shall see Chartley discarded from Gratiana. Censor be gone. And if I fail in any of these or the rest, I lay myself open to all your displeasures. Farewell till soon. You know your meeting place? We do. We do. You shall report me wise and cunning too. Exit wise woman, etc., leaving second loose. I'll add one night more to the time I have said. I have not many I hope to live a maid. And exit. And there we pause with the wise woman waving her magic wand. You shall go to the ball. Um, <laughs> yes, and a, a very discreet use of the whisper. So mm. we don't know what the cunning plan is. There is a cunning plan, and I'm sure it is very cunning from the wise woman, um, who is very wise and is also a woman, and uh, is here, uh, yes, using the whisper to, to, to not tell the audience what's going on. And, but, but very usefully, I feel, for a return session for session three <laughs> just put going you want to marry them you don't want them to marry you want to you know just just really spelling out for any latecomers where we <laughs> are with the plot um so that's uh that's 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 very helpful um any thoughts of the room as we're sort of just getting back into the swing of things eric it's occurred to me, I don't know why I didn't think of this last time, but anyway, it's occurred to me that Charlie is basically one of those guys who sort of misunderstand polyamory as cheating. So that it's like, <laughs> oh, yes, I, I'm polyamorous. I can go sleep with anyone I want without telling my wife. Um, and this is kind of what he's doing, except like by marrying. <laughs> um, I'm assuming there is also like some sort of monetary gain to this. It's sort of, I don't know, because otherwise there would be no like motive um aside from having lots of wives and enjoying them 
Well, it's an interesting yeah. question from Chartley's point of view whether he's doing this for monetary gain or whether he's just, he's a gentleman, so you know he's he's got yeah. his debts to depend on. Um, so, <laughs> uh, so he's got that as a, a thing. I, I'm actually thinking when you just mentioned money, I was just thinking: Are people handing the wise woman coin as this scene goes on as well? I'm, I'm, you know, the wise woman is 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 a businesswoman. I think is very important. Uh, so I do wonder what she's expecting to get out of some of this. Uh, some some of it may be kindness. Some of it will be business. I suspect kind kindness to the women and business to the men. That is the direction of travel, I feel. But uh, production can make decisions on that. Uh, Sarah waved and then Lynn. Yes, I, I just wanted to flag up uh, the first little scene we did because I really enjoyed it um, just because it was putting into action what we'd previously heard about. Um, you know, there was that whole conversation yesterday between the wise woman and second loose where... where Second Lewis was like, uh, yeah, why why do you have this little thing with the door? This little hole, like whole door in the door or hole in the door. And she's like, oh, yeah, so that I can hit so that you basically answer the door and you get them to tell you what they want. And then I overhear it. And and here we've got it in effect, because the fact that Second Lewis is like, oh, yeah, I'm a bit deaf. Can you say that a bit louder? Mm. <laughs> is is you know that that is the fulfillment of that gag because mm. you know then the wise woman comes out and says oh you're here because Charlie's getting married tomorrow aren't you Ta -da. And it, just, <laughs> it, it, it just made me laugh and i i found it very satisfying yeah it's, the wise woman is the kind of person who turn up to a psychical meeting uh society meeting and say i just need to be left alone for a while to commune before we have the meeting in your records room for an hour that would be lovely <laughs> okay. um yes you uh, do you, someone live here or uh, live on 39 Gr Gracious Street? You know, yeah. uh, it, 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 she's a terrible cold reader, um, but she does her prep. Um. <laughs> uh, Lynn. Yeah, so to, going back to respond to Eric, I, I don't know about gain, but there are economic and class considerations. One of the reasons that Chartley, I think, explicitly says to us that he doesn't really want to marry Luce, the um, merchant's daughter, is because she's she is a, a lower social status and and presumably doesn't bring in a regular landed income so yeah there are economic considerations hmm. uh, Aliki and then elizabeth oh, and around. then eric I, I think there was something about his inheritance too i think if his father catches him married <laughs> to the wrong person he's going to get disinherited or hmm. going to get his allowance hmm. denied him or something hmm. uh elizabeth then eric then alan yeah, I was just thinking, like, if Charlie was a woman doing all these things, it would have been, like, the play would have to kill her just to kind of, <laughs> just just to kind of, like, keep the moral panic at bay. But because he's a man, he just seems to be getting away with with murder, you know? And I just feel like, I was just thinking about, I think it's the Insatiate Countess. Mm. Yeah. She had multiple partners. Like, she... I can't remember if she dies in the end, but the the the, the punishment it just seems so unequal. The gender the gender divide it just seems so unequal that he can get away with this. And I've got a feeling that towards the end he will have a happy ending as well. No pun yeah. intended. Yeah. Uh, well, yes. Um, I I suspect he's had many happy endings um, <laughs> already. This is sort of, I think his his general motive. Um, yeah, I absolutely right. The, the, this is a, a totally unfair society. Um, do, doing you know, uh, and, and we, I suspect we are going to have that problem with the ending. We, we will get to the ending when we get to the ending, but uh, uh, predictions are already, um, yeah, heading in that direction. Uh, Eric, then Alan, then we'll move on. Uh, yeah, I was just going to mention, because I, I came in without knowing like what happened before, so I, I was wondering about the, the whole deafness uh, thing, but that makes sense now that Sarah explained it. It actually makes sense, and I... I, I I, I like the idea that she went from like, oh, you live somewhere in where do you live? Um, I'm I'm I, I'm sensing an R K. Oh, Kent, yes, Kent. Oh, uh, yes, I know that place. Uh, whereas uh, now it's more like, oh, you're Spencer. Yes, I know your name. I've seen you before. Um, it's it's a big game changer. Mm. Uh, Alan. Yeah, I think we had it explained in part of yesterday's session that. Uh, Chart is actually a month away from becoming legally adult and therefore being entitled to his inheritance without daddy having the opportunity to cut him off for misbehaviour. Mm. 
which means he's really playing with fire, isn't he? Um, yeah. You know, he has to wait a little lo- a while. Um, disinherit him. That's the, okay. That's an option for the end of the play. Disinheritance. Okay, let's uh, let's see whether we get that. We're still in Act Four, and each of the acts have been generally quite self-contained. Act Three was a little more diffuse, but we really. Um, so I'm. I'm so let's continue to get a sense of the flow of Act Four. Um, Act Four, Scene Five. Enter Tabor and Sir Boniface with a trencher with broken meat and a napkin. Fie, fie. What a time of trouble is this tomorrow? Tomorrow is my mistress to be married, and we serving men are so puzzled. But dinner's half done, and, and before I say grace and bid the old knight and his guests per face, a medicine from your trencher, good Master Tabor, as good a man as e'er was Sir Sabre, will think it no shame, men of learning and wit. Say study... Gets a stomach, friend Tabor, a bit. Lick clean good, sir, Boniface, and save the scraper a labour. Enter censor like a serving man. But soft, uh, let me ponder. Know you him that comes yonder? Most heartily welcome, would you speak with any here? Pray, is the young gentleman of the house at leisure? Uh, mean you the bridegroom, Master Charlie? I have a letter for him. You seem to be a gentleman yourself. Acquaint him with my attendance, and I shall rest yours in all good offices. Uh, Sir Boniface, uh, please pray pray keep the gentleman company. I will first acquaint your lips with the virtue of the cellar. Ah, Destem, come near and taste of your beer. Welcome, Sinadole, for Puntis Tevole. Exit. When I taste of your liquor, Gramasi. Master Vicar. <laughs> Enter Tabor with a bowl of beer and a napkin. Most heartily welcome your curtsy, I beseech you. Ply it off. I entreat you. Pray, Sir Boniface, keep the gentleman company till I acquaint my young master with his business. And exit. Tabor, I shall beso las manos. They dissemble one to another. A vostra servitor. Enter Herringfield. Hey, what art thou? A hanger on, if it please you. And I, a shaker off. I'll not bear your gallows. You shall not hang me. And to Chartley with his napkin as from dinner. Oh, oh, Master Bridegroom. Gentlemen, the ladies call upon you to dance. They will be out of measure displeased if dinner being done, you be not ready to... Lead them in a measure. Indeed, women love not to be scanted of their measure. A fie, Sir Boniface, have you forgot yourself? While you are in the hall, there's never a whetstone for their wits in the parlour. I will enter and set an edge upon their ingenies. Uh, To me, sir? From whom? A letter to her most dear, most loving, most kind friend, Master Chartley, these be delivered. <laughs> sure, from some wench or other. <laughs> I long to know the contents. Now, to cry quittance with you for my farewell, learned Sir Timothy. Good news, as I live! <laughs> uh, uh, there's for thy pains, my good Sir Pandarus. <laughs> As thou brought me word my father had turned up his heels, thou could scarcely have pleased me better. Though I disclaim the name of wife, of which I account myself altogether unworthy, yet let me claim some small interest in your love. <laughs> this night I lie at the house where we were married, the wise woman's I mean, where my maidenhead is to be rifled. <laughs> Bid fair for it and enjoy it. See me this night or never. So may you marry Gratiana and loving me have a sweet wife and a true friend. <laughs> this night or never. Your quondam wife, hereafter your poor sweetheart, no other, loose. So... When I am tired with Gratiana, that is when I am past grace, with her I can make my rendezvous. 
not slip this occasion, nor sleep till I see her. Thou art an honest lad, and mayst prove a good pimp in time. Dost thou advise me what colour I may have to compass this commodity? Ah, uh, this night. She, this night, expects you and bears a costly banquet for you. <laughs> oh, I'll go, although the devil and, and Miss Charles look big. Ah, uh, feign some news that a piece of land is fallen to you, and you must instantly ride to take possession of it, which is more probable. Cannot you persuade them you have received a letter that your father lies a dying? You rogue! I would he did. But the name of that news is called Too Good to be True. And that if ever you will see him alive, you must ride post into the country. Enough. If ever I prove knight errant, thou shalt beat mine own proper squire. For this thou hast fitted me with a plot. Do but wait here. Note how I will manage it. <laughs> Tabor, my horse, for I must ride tonight. Tonight, sir? So tell my bride and father. I have news that quite confounds my senses. Enter Sir Harry, Gretiana, Harringsfield. How ride tonight? The marriage day tomorrow, and all things well provided for the feast. Oh, tell me, sweet, why do you look so pale? My father! Oh! My father! What of him? What of your father, son? If ever I will hear his aged tongue preach to me counsel, or his palsy hand stroke my wild head and bless me, or his eyes drop tear by tear, which they have often done at my misgoverned rioting youth. What should I more if ever I would see the good old man alive? Oh! Go thy ways, for thou shalt have it. But do you mean to ride? Aye, Grace, all this night. Not all the night, without alighting sure. You'll find more in it than to get up and ride. The gentleman's riding boots and spurs. Why, Tabor? Uh, nay, Grace, now's no time to stamp on scrupulous party. What's thou my business? As she shall know it. And how I mean this night to toil myself. Marry, hang you, Brock. I would bemoan my travel. I know it will grieve her. Your father, Grace, good Mr. Harringfield, you, sir, and all. Pray for me, gentlemen, that in this dark night's journey, I may find smooth way, sweet speed, and all things to my mind. Well, see my son take horse. And exuant. But I will stay. I want the heart to see him post away. Save you, gentlemen. Gentlewoman, I have a message to deliver to one Mistress Gratiana. This should be the night's house, her father. It is. The message that you have to her, you may acquaint me with, for I am one that knows the inside of her thoughts. Are you the lady? Sir, I am the poor gentlewoman. There is a cunning woman, dwells not far, a Hogston lady, famous for a skill. Besides some private talk that much concerns your fortunes and your love, she hath to show you this night, which will please you to walk so far as to her house. Admiral's suit of costly needlework, which, if you please, you may buy under rate for half the value it cost in the making. About six o'clock you may have a view thereof, but otherwise a lady that hath craved the sight thereof must have the first refusal. I'll not fail her. My husband being this day rid from home, my leisure fitly serves me. Thank you, mistress. At six o'clock? I will not fail the hour. And exit Gretiana. Now to Sir Harry, his is the next place, to meet at Hogston, his fair daughter Grace. 
And uh, so this plot line has been set in motion. Whatever was whispered in his ear, this seems to be the outcome. Uh, I'm, I'm really interested by Gratiana's uh, response. And in fact, I'm curious about the punctuation on Gratiana's response when everybody else leaves the room. I will stay. I want the heart to see him post away. Now, is it a question? Uh, uh, is it a statement? What, what, what is the want of heart? Uh, what, 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 are, what are Gretiana's feelings about Chartley um, uh, and, 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 and their relationship so far? Uh, so there's, there's, there's lots of interesting uh, sort of thoughts I had there. Chartley once again managed to do, do his bravura display of being a total git. Um, yeah. and, uh, uh, and, and yeah, changing, changing the direction once again. Uh, thoughts on the room, Lynn? Yeah, I dislike him more and more. Um, yeah, I mean, saying that, you know, the best news possible would be that my father's dead. Uh, um, and and then his, his, you know, dramatic performance of, oh, my father is dying, my dear, dear father. I'll do, oh, you know, oh, it's just, wow, the, the play is going to some lengths to um put his his hypocrisy on display yikes mm. Mm. but there is there is something in, again enjoyable about this kind of level of histrionics of course we are in on the the the, the knowledge mm. and it's not true and also we know he's being led into a trap i mean that's the that's one of the important elements of this it's not like we know he's going to get away with this uh we know that you know the wise woman is wise and therefore all will be well um he said I don't know. Maybe it won't. Um, other thoughts in the room? Um, that's the end of Act 4. Um, the many things will happen in Act 5. Uh, Sarah, then Eric. Yeah, I just um, wanted to come back to your question about what Gratiana says there at the end. I mean, um, it's interesting because I, I assumed... That that thing of I I you know what well, I can't find the line now but I want oh yes I want the part I want the heart to see him post away I assume that was like oh no it's too painful to what mm -hmm. for me to watch him ride off into the distance I I'll, I'll stay here and just you know um, but then actually um, what I found really fun about that the end of that little scene was the fact that when censor then says oh yeah there's a woman dwells not she's got some fantastic embroidery she's like you really you know um you really want to see this before this other woman gets to have a look at it um i i could just imagine that playing in 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 my head that it's like oh god he's leaving me the night before our wedding i'm so upset Oh, really good embroidery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll be there. I'll be I'll be down at six o'clock. Um, <laughs> so, so it's kind of I, I felt like she was being genuine in that moment. But then I think that little scene afterwards almost undercuts or, or at least you could you could direct it in that way that it's like, yeah, she 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 is upset that he's gone and he's left her. But like, she's not so like heartbroken. That... Yes, exactly. She's not going to be. I think this is kind of setting up the fact that, you know, when hopefully all is revealed, she's not going to be heart heartbroken um, the way that, you know, she she could potentially be. But but hopefully not. Mm. Uh, Eric. Um, yeah, I was just um, what was I going to say? I, I'm just intrigued that Censor has managed to sort of get into the household as a serving man as he said in like the first time we met him in like when, when he encountered sir harry the first time and um like he i'm just confused as to how, why they don't recognize him or is it just like assumed that he's going to <laughs> that he's going to um be sort of there as himself uh yeah alan well, I, th I think two things. One, he is uh, impersonating some of the lower orders, therefore would be probably not regarded as being particularly noticeable. Mm -hmm. Plus, plus mm -hmm. he's international man of mystery. <laughs> Keeps turning up in different disguises. Mm. Uh, are there thoughts in the room? Uh, we, I say, we are, we are. Uh, out of the uh, the the side of Act Four, we're about to go into Act uh, Five. Uh, 
I believe that's how the numbers work. Uh, Eric, did you have another thought? Yes, I did. Um, well, it's sort of that sort of brilliant setup that they have. At, um, well, maybe not like westerns or like music. Well, maybe musicals. Musicals is better. Where you have like this epic, like sort of um, final scene with the ensemble, and that's basically what they're setting up for. Whether it's going to be a good scene for us uh, or not is a different question. But it just seems like, you know, they're they've basically set up this whole thing of they're all gonna be at the same place at the same time. Mm, yes. They're they're all heading to for that thing. Um, I, I also just uh, briefly uh, before I go to Elizabeth, um, just on, on the structure of the scene, we have this nice little moment with Sir Boniface and T Tabor at the beginning, you know, which sets the scene. I mean, it has a structural purpose in the sense of setting that they're all at dinner and they're all sort of coming in and out and, and, and stuff. But it's nice to just have these little moments with these characters as well. It's it's a nice little moment just to let um, uh, Sensor and Sir Boniface still have their little back and forth, even if they don't, <laughs> Boniface doesn't know he's having his back and forth again, uh, having been bested in earlier in the play. So I, I just wanted to just throw that in. And it's partly, I don't even know if it, no, if it is structural really i suppose it, we need to make sure that um sensor's got a little bit more time to go off and then come back on again um but um yeah it's, it's not wholly structural anyway but it's a nice bit of scene setting elizabeth yeah i just wanted to speak to what eric was saying about like time and place in this um i haven't done the first two sessions so i might be wrong here but i do feel like there's like a dynamism there's like a stretchiness to time in this and and there's a i got a very um, I got a sense of a very much enclosed space, like they're all in, like all on top of each other, kind of thing. But maybe I'm wrong. What What are your thoughts? I, I think definitely there's a sense of enclosure for for a lot of this play. Um, there's a lot of stuff happening in rooms. Um, it, it's it's not a very expansive universe. I mean, it's 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 a reasonably tight number of characters who are interacting in slightly different ways. Time wise, it it is a bit wibbly wobbly because, but it could all happen in hypothetically could happen in a very short period of time but some elements of it feel like they need there needs to be a bit of air room between sections that in in, in real life would have to happen but you know nothing about this play is really about real life so I don't, I don't think that matters but yeah there is a question of time i don't think you're supposed i think you're supposed to get the impression that everything's moving very very fast but um that may not in real life be practical um eric uh, yeah, I was just wondering because I, I obviously I missed the session yesterday. I was just wondering if Tabor's question about the kitchen maid has been resolved or not. Because <laughs> like I realized that she hasn't turned up again, has she? She. Just, I hope perhaps... she's still there. Yeah, <laughs> waiting in the parlor. Waiting in the parlor. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, yes, yeah. <laughs> well, well, maybe he resolved the question in the back room. I mean, that uh, <laughs> does get the impression that the wise woman had facilities for such uh, decision making uh the, the maid wanted to know whether she was a maid or no um and uh, Tabor had had one way of def def definitely deciding that answer uh that question uh so um yeah it was an odd little moment um <laughs> which has not been resolved no uh, nothing happened on that 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 front eric we never found out we never found out what happened about the man's urine uh, the, the the wife's the the, the 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 bloke who turned up with his wife's urine so um but you know what testings are like. Uh, anyway, I'm going to go into Act 5. So we've just had the bravura performance of Chartley. Oh, my father, my father. Act 5, Scene 1. Enter Old Master Chartley. Um, well done, Hayward. Uh, as new come out of the country to inquire after his son and three or four serving men with blue coats to attend him. Good heaven. This London is a stranger grown. And out of my acquaintance, this seven years I have not seen Pulse Steeple or Cheap Cross. Oh, hang on, I've just realised I've given you the same part to talk to yourself. Uh, that, that can't... No, 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 I'm not going to make you do that. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> why, why, why has that happened? Something, something's gone wrong there. Uh, uh, I've got Alan... it handled if you like. <laughs> no, it's all right. Um, sorry, uh, Alan, read Giles. I don't think he turns up again. <laughs> ah! that... Hast thou not made inquiry for my son? Yes, sir, I've asked. Had everywhere for him. I cannot hear of him. Disperse yourselves. Inquire about the taverns, ordinaries, bowl alleys, tennis courts, gaming houses. For there I fear he will be found. 
But where shall we hear of your worship again? At Grace Church by the Conduit, near Sir Harry. But stay. Leave off a while your bootless search. Had e'er man such a wild brain to his sorrow, of such small hope, who when he should have married a fair, a modest, and a virtuous maid, rich and revenued well, and even the night before the marriage day, took horse, rode dense weather heaven knows, since the distracted virgin had left her father's house, but neither found, yet in their search, we have measured out much ground. And with that recap of the plot for everyone, uh, enter Sir Harry and Censor. Your worship will be there? Yes, not to fail at the half an hour past six or before seven. You shall not find us at six and at seven. I warrant you, good health to your worship. Exit Censor. Good fellow, at the wise woman's house. I know it well. Perhaps she knows some danger touching me. I'll keep mine hour. Sir Harry, a hand, a hand to balk you, it were sin. I shall be bold to make your house mine in. Brother Chartley, I'm glad to see you. Methinks, Sir Harry, you look strangely on me, and do not bid me welcome within heart. And blame me not to look amazedly to see you here. Why, me? Uh, come, come, you're welcome, and now altered my strangeness to his true joy. I'm glad to see you well and safe recovered of your late grievous sickness. The strange, amazed looks that you cast off, you put on me, and blame me not to wonder that you should talk of sickness to sound men. I thank my stars. I did not taste the grief of inward pain or outward malady this seven years day. But by your favor, brother, then let me have my wonder back again. Before I quite part with it, let me know. Why you, the name of brother, put upon me in every clause, a name as strange to me as my recovered sickness? You are pleasant, and it becomes you well. Welcome again, the rather you are just come to the wedding. What wedding, sir? That you should ask that question. Why, my daughter Grace? Is Grace bestowed? Of whom, I pray? <laughs> of whom but your son? I wonder, Brother Charlie, and my friend, you should play this on me. But by your favor, were you ten knights, Sir Harry, take me with you. My son, match with your daughter, my consent, not worthy to be craved. Nay, then I see you will serve my patience. Know this forward match took first its first birth yeah, took its first birth from you. From me. Yeah, from you, bruise this letter. Know you your own <laughs> hand. Twas well uh, I reserved your hand a witness against your tongue. You had rather you had best denied the jointure of the, these three hundred pounds made to my daughter. Tis that I know you aim at, but your seal shall not make me approve it. I deny this seal for mine, nor do I vouch that hand. Your daughter and the dower. Letter and all, I quite disclaim, Sir Harry, you much wrong me. I can bear more than this, heap wrong on wrong and support it all. Oh, I for this time will cast my swing behind me, and yet hear me. This letter your son Charlie has from you delivered me. I like the motion well. My spleen is further thrown aside than yours, and I am fool as patient. Yet hear me. My son's contracted to another maid. Nay, I am patient still. Yet the I writ, this letter sealed, this impress, I deny. Why then the jack your handed counterfeit? Why, then he did so. 
Where's that unthrift speak? Some hour ago he mounted in red post to give you visit, whom he said lay sick upon your deathbed. You amaze me, sir. It is an ill presage hereon I see. Your former salutation took its ground to see me safe recovered of my sickness. I, indeed it did. Your welcome is a straight is a subject I cannot use too oft. Welcome again. I'm sorry you this night must suffer alone, for I'm elsewhere called about some business concerning what I know not. Hours run on. I must to Hoxton. Um, at the high time I were gone. Exit, Sir Harry. Perhaps to the wise woman's she may tell me the fortunes of my son. This accident hath bred in me suspicion and strange fears. I will not sup alone. I protest, monks, some this night. I'll play the intruding guest. And exits uh, old Chartley with his serving men. Oh, can we hear those clucking uh, the, 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 in the distance, yes, there's, there's uh, some, some chickens are coming home to roost. There they go. Um, yes, uh, at the moment, uh, and this is where you know, the, the, the question of act structure, it depends who's uh, uh, hosting this particular play. Uh, it, it's, it's better if there isn't any kind of break in the action, because, of course, you've gone from announcing your father's dead. Father immediately turns up and, yeah, the plots unravel like that. And, you know, old Charlie has his son's number. He really does. He knows exactly who he is. He knows all about Luce, uh, second Luce. You know, she, she, she the breach of promise and then she disappeared. I mean, we're all a bit worried. Um, and... And all this, this back and forth, and going, but you're you're supposed to be grievously ill. No, I'm fine. And, and I love the way Sir Harry exits at the end there, just going, um, yes, uh, well, um, s s sorry about this. You're going to have to dine. I'm, I, I've, I've got an urgent appointment somewhere else. Um, because this is a bit awkward. Um, so <laughs> he's off to Hoxton, uh, and Old Chartley too is determined to go and visit the wise woman. So everybody's heading to Hoxton. <laughs> Uh, well done all. Um, so it feels it feels good. This this I feel like we may we may be moving more towards a resolution we we can cope with because I, I I I'm generally liking the older the older men as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. They, they 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 don't always come up trumps, but they they um they can be sometimes a bit mercantile in the uh, the the business of 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 matches. But most of the time, when someone comes a wooing their daughters, they go go away. Uh, in in a quite a nice way, and and uh, the the one of them went a, a bit astray, but uh, there the, there's some there's some nice moments in there. Uh, Sarah, yes, uh, uh, and also we we did it was inferred yesterday in the in the middle section of the play that um, it was sort of in inferred that uh, that Harry knew Charlie's father, but it it wasn't <clears throat> really. I, I wasn't quite sure how well they knew each other. Whereas this, what this scene does, is it solidifies the fact that they go back a long way. Mm. Um, that they go, they go back a, a, a long way. They have a, they obviously have a, 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 a long-standing friendship, and so that then, again, makes this a, a, another old father figure more a really endearing character because. Um, you know the fact that he immediately agrees to Charlie marrying his daughter is like, oh yes, that would be. Look, your father said this, and if you guys are happy, then that would be great. Yeah, let's do that. It makes that a, a far less mercantile and far more benign kind of action. It's still quite hasty, but hey, you know, um, he feels he knows all the parties involved. So, what could possibly go wrong? And also, when um, when Charlie in the preceding scene is like oh my father's dying you know his concern there is um genuine you know he's like oh god no yeah you know me you must go to your father so again it's making these older patriarchal figures really endearing in a way that they, i quite often don't find them in in comedies but that that these are fathers who seem to want the best for everybody you know rather than just want the best for their own uh, enrichment or aggrandizement or, or or whatever they they both both this father and um oh my god which one was it 
um Lucy's father yeah. they 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 seem to be sort of really human um you know yeah a bit flawed whatever a bit bit daft but but just really like uh nice people that you're actually rooting for and so yeah i am beginning to i do have a, a glimmer of hope that actually maybe charlie is going to get his comeuppance just because all the characters that are ranged against him are, are we're, mm -hmm. we're we're connecting to all of them in, a, in in quite a sort of nice emotional way and 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 that maybe does point to to an ending that might be quite quite good maybe i hope yeah. Well, let's 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 not go that far. Um, <laughs> but, uh, I don't I don't know. I haven't read ahead. Um, but um, I mean, there's nice little early modern details that I quite like. You know, so you know, he he, he when when surprised at seeing this guy uh, still alive. You know, brother Charlie and of course, you know, because the, the you know the uh, you know the the the, the, the their in laws and all uh, now and the other ones going. Why are you calling me brother? We're not related. You know, and it's uh, this this nice little back and forth. But also just the listing of all the places, the fun places you can go to. Um, in in this. Um, uh, you know, the, the, you know, where's your son? Well, uh, have a look at the taverns, the ordinaries, the bowling alleys, the tennis courts, the gaming houses, all of which are probably in the same place. Um, uh, the, 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 each other, yeah. You know, and, and and in association with playhouses, you know, the, 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 these are these are things. Uh, and and just to point out, we're not sponsored by any content, but anyway. But if you're interested in such uh, things, uh, what is a playhouse uh, by uh, Callum Davies is a very good book on the, that subject um, about the nature of uh, of play and uh, and uh, such things available from all good stockists. We are not paid. This is not a sponsorship deal. Uh, just making it clear for the YouTube so that you don't do strange things to this video. But that's a very good book to read. Uh, uh, Alan. I'm just wondering uh, whether, in fact, Sir Harry and old Charlie plausibly could have been students at the Inns of Court, in which case the term brother would actually be appropriate. Mm. And I'm, the thought has occurred to me whether they were actually both in a similar position a generation earlier to that of um, the younger... Uh, ne'er do wells that we've encountered so far through most of the play. Doubt there'll be inns of court because of the the nature of their status. Not impossible, but I suspect not. Um, but uh, certainly th they may have had a previous uh, uh, nature uh, relationship that uh, with uh, has in their youth that, that that's entirely plausible. Yeah, uh, Aliki then Eric. Yeah, I think they they must have been friends as young men. But um, I think the scene is telling us. So far as old Chartley is concerned, there is no reason for Sir Harry to call him brother. In fact, we, we have this little discussion about it. That's how we find out about the marriage, or that's mm. how he finds out about the marriage. Mm. Uh, Eric? I just like the fact that he goes from, hey, your son's married to my daughter, that's so cool, and then he goes, why then, Jack? Your hand did counterfeit. And then like you kind of expect that a father would defend sort of his offspring but you get instead like chartley going why where's that unthrift speak <laughs> it's kind of like um it's basically what sarah was saying but just i i, I like the sort of language yeah um, oh yeah old chartley has absolutely got chartley's number he, he knows exactly who his son is um um <laughs> okay uh we have a short scene before we go into the final scene so act five scene two enter the wise woman uh, censor Luce and her father and Luce number two. But will Sir Harry come? Well, she me well and Charlie too. I'll have the knave by the ears. Nay, patience, sir. Leave your revenge to me. Enter Master Boyster. Grand Am, I have come according to your promise. And welcome to the best hole that I have in Ogston. Good evening. Well, thanks, sir. A good even may it prove that each may reap the fruits of their own love. That shall be my prayer, too. As do. Withdraw. I'll place you all in several rooms. Where sit, see, but say nothing. Exuant. Uh, enter Tabor ushering Gratiana. Here, sweet mistress, I know the place well ever since I was here to know my fortune. Call me some half an hour hence. 
and exit. Um, so the, th this may be an artificial break effectively between scenes because in a sense this is a flowing scene going into the next bit of action. In fact, the wise wo woman may not have meaningfully exited before she immediately re-enters. But uh, I think the important detail just to note here is go into the several rooms so I can arrange all of you uh, it, it, without seeing each other so that I, once I've got all my ducks in a row we can spring the trap. Uh, that's sort of how I feel this 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 is an introduction to. Any additional thoughts on that otherwise we'll just go straight into the final scene eric just the line welcome to the best hold that i have it's yeah i mean yeah. In modern i did wonder terms, if there was a typo a there or rude. something yeah yeah it's um it, it is within um her remit i suppose uh okay um we'll move very swiftly on act five scene three enter the wise woman and second loose your ladyship is most lovingly welcome. A low stool for the gentleman, boy. I may bolt send to you to take view of such a piece of work, as I presume you have seldom seen the like. Of whose doing, I pray? A friend of yours and mine. Please you withdraw. I'll bring you to it. Mistress. One call, sweet lady. I shall do you wrong. But pray you think my little stay not long. Enter Censor, Sir Harry, and Luce. Yes, sir. In this retiring chamber. Bro, mercy, friend. How now? What's here to do a pretty wench in a close chamber to? That you have so much graced my mother's house with your desired presence, worthy knight. Receive a poor maid's thanks. <clears throat> Who's there? A chair and cushion for Sir Harry? Thanks, most fair. Please you but a few minutes here to stay, till my return. I'll not be long away. The gentlewoman will wait on you by and by, sir. And I'll attend her friend of all those doubts I long to know the end. And enter Second Loose and Old Chartley. The probability of clashes increases. The knight you seek was here, or will be straight. And if you be the man you name yourself, you are most welcome, and you shall not back till you have seen Sir Harry. Gentle youth, I saw him enter here, and under privilege of his acquaintance made I bold to say. And you are welcome, sir. Sit down, I pray. Now they placed in several rooms that look into this one. Were Chartley come, we had all our company. One knocks. Tis Charlie on my life. One of you let him in while I prepare me to entertain his coming. Enter young Chartley, ushered in by censor. What? Old acquaintance, Luce? Not a word? Yet some lip laver, if thou lovest me. My husband? What, young Chartley? How? My son. Oh, come, come away with this wailing in woe. If thou put'st finger in the eye a little longer, I shall plunge in pain too presently. Oh, husband, husband. Husband? What sayest thou, my sweet wife? Wife? Oh, my heart. In that name, wife, I claim a poor child's part. Oh, husband, how have you used me? Nay, how do I mean to use thee, but as a man should use his wife? I hope he doth not mean to use her so. I hope so too. My grandam is a witch. Oh, sorry. Uh, nay, like, um, is there, are you okay with these um, clashes, Rob? You... Yeah, it's it's yeah. it it's it, okay. it, 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 I I I, okay. I don't really see it I, I, unless okay. you want to hand me one. No, of No, no. <laughs> well, it's up to you. But I'm if you're happy, I'm okay. I'll just keep going. Mm. Nay, Lou, sweet wife, leave weeping if thou lovest me. Oh, can you blame me, knowing that the fountain of all these springs took their first head from you? You passed. You too well know. Not three days since our past since we were married. Married? I can endure no longer. Cannot be. It is not possible. 
I'll be even with thee for this old grand am. And though we wanted witness upon earth, yet heaven bears the record of our nuptial tie. Oh, Tosh, when we meet in heaven, let's talk of that. Nay, come on, ass you fool, what's past is past. Though man and wife, yet I must marry now. Another gallant, here's thy letter loose. Oh, mm, 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 mm. no, I, I feel like this is like a conversation between two people. Never mind. Another, I, I feel like I must marry now another gallant. Here's thy letter loose, and this night I intend to lodge with thee. I'll scratch her eyes out first, although I love her. Oh, prithee be merry. I have made a gull of grace, and old Sir Harry thinks me a great way off. I told the knight my father laid a dying, took post horse, rid out of Hoban, turned by Islington, so hither wench to lodge all night with thee. Here's one saith nay to that. Was that your journey? Why, I have had too much of grace already. Thou has no grace at all. Nay, let's to bed. If thou couldst but imagine how I love thee, Luce. How is it possible you can love me and go about to marry another? Dost thou not know she's rich? Why, you fool, as soon as I have got her dower, it is but giving her a dram or a pill to purge melancholy, to make her turn up her heels, and then with all that wealth, Come I to live with thee, my sweet rascal. She thanks you and is much beholding to you. And we're going to pause there because, um, and it's not very clear from the stage directions, um, but of course um, it was set up in the previous scene. There's all these people in the other rooms in various different little boxes. And they, I, 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 and this scene is potentially quite funny depending on how you physically stage it. Because if you have just lots of little curtains, you know, indoor, you know just, what the hell did you do that? Oh, that they did a bull. Um, ah, um, it, just popping in from different parts of the house uh that works really well so if if we think of uh the wise woman's uh, uh, um i was going to say um uh, bordello but uh, i i it, it it's a, such a room of uh, a household of there's just so many different jobs um but it's, it's sort of like you're a panopticon um <laughs> it's you've got all these various people surrounding this central room where where the the, the <laughs> sarah's uh, talking to herself a lot um <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and 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 basically, Chartley is 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 annoying one person after another after another. Gratiana um, is is discovering that he's married. Uh, old Chartley is really not impressed. Um, and and yeah, everybody's everybody. He's just really and that's very gratifying so far. I'm I'm very enjoying that. And Gratiana, of course, is the first one to break ground and go. She thanks you and is much beholding to you. Ah! Um, Sarah. Yeah, I also think, given the nature of the wise woman's many different businesses, um, I, I think she would have a lot of hiding places mm. in her parlour. So you can imagine that there's like, um, you know, a cupboard under the stairs and someone's hiding in that and someone's tucked away behind, well, probably not a sofa in this era, but, you know, a settle or whatever. And, right. um, you know, yes, yeah, someone's it's hiding a behind a curtain, yes, and then there's a screen and someone's tucked away behind there because, you know, she, she would she would perhaps want a room where she could stash or places within a room where she could stash people depending on <laughs> what was going on and who had just arrived at her door. So, you know, the fact that, that you, you could have like, like lots of people, you could make the room look quite normal, but still have like lots of different hiding people places with people just popping up and doors opening and close you know and then they all gradually emerge i, I think this is brilliant this scene mm, yes I, I feel that one of them should just be standing in a corner with a lampshade on their head um uh, anyway aliki uh, you could also have a lot of peepholes given the the nature of her businesses or her mm. various businesses but yeah there's something wonderfully farce about this people just going oh brilliant i love it Mm. And it's going to be one of those things that's actually going to be an absolute sod to rehearse because you have to be absolutely on time with this and also mm. in tune figuring out where the laughs are coming from the audience so that you don't uh, get the timing wrong. Uh, but you've, uh, but I think that it's that reveal, disappear, reveal, disappear is important. They can't just be standing in plain sight that 
you know, the conceit is they can't see it. There's got to be something moved uh, or moved around from um, to make that really pop for humour. Um, though not as necessarily as many hiding places as you, 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 we could maximise the number of hiding places, but you, you, you can get away with pretty much two or three uh, structurally within the, the way this, this flows. So it doesn't have to be as complicated if you don't have the... The, the set but this is now creating set complications which uh you know is is, is a nice problem to have I, I don't have a problem with that any other thoughts before we move on eric i was kind of intrigued that he actually does tell you you know this is why i'm marrying her it's like the the you know as soon as i have got her dower it is but giving her a dram or a pill to purge melancholy and it's like so he plans to murder her is that the point or is that just like me misunderstanding no, that's yeah. what he's threatening. That's what he's telling Lucy yeah. he'll do. God he's, knows what is. He's going to a whole new level of skullduggery here, isn't he? Because it's like we already like really don't like him, but he's actually. Um, Elizabeth said earlier he was getting away with murder, and it looks like he is actually planning to do that. I mean, he's Haywood is really laying this on thick, but in a just to, just to save that 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 depth of skullduggery as well till this point and then just casually throw it in like that i think is brilliant is it quite as excessive it, it, i mean it, it infer you know i don't know if it fully goes in down the fully i'll murder her route but um uh because it, 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 it's it's a bit ambiguous giving her a drama a pill to purge melancholy to make her turn up her heels um i mean it could be murder but it could also be just just uh, to, uh for her to run away um you know to, to uh, you know to i i don't I, I don't think it's explicit. It's, it, I think a lot of people wouldn't necessarily get that in the flow of it. I think what you're getting here is I'm going to get the money and then we'll just go off and ignore her. Yeah. Um, but hey, we can go full murder. I don't mind. How are we feeling about that? Dan, you have thoughts? Just it seems like a lot of a, a very light touch mm. in this act. So even if it was going to that extreme, I still think it would be taken in a in, in a light manner, mm. not necessarily like, oh my God, but where have we gone? Maybe today it wouldn't necessarily be, but I think when this, the way that I, I imagined this was played, it was mm. probably was that kind of fast paced lightness and not supposed to take it too seriously. Mm. Though I do notice looking ahead that there is an explicit reference to poison. So I tried, I tried, I failed. Um, okay. Um, anyway, we'll, we'll go or on. Uh, <laughs> well, you know, um, uh, so uh, that's, Trust me, audiences will find it hilarious, the idea of the murder. Um, that's because they're all horrible people, the audiences. Um, really, really deep down you are. Um, you'll laugh at anything. Um, no moral no moral compass at all, audiences. Given our enthusiasm for tragedies, I don't think we're in a position to accuse no, anything. No, oh, I'm, I'm one of them. I'm one of them. Uh, absolutely. Anyway, um... Uh, murder is so much easier to navigate. Um, uh, <laughs> but it could be very dark, like arsenic mm. and old lace. Yeah. yeah no. uh, okay, we uh, will go on. Um, um, actually, Gretiana, can you do your uh, your line? She thanks you again. Burst out of that cubby hole and, uh, and scare the bejesus out of Chartley. She thanks you and is much beholding to you. Oh! I am betrayed. Art thou my suitor? Wouldst thou marry me and thy first wife alive, then poison me to purchase my poor dower? Oh, what shall I say? Or think, or do. I am at a nonplus. Hast thou the face, thou brazen impudence, to look upon me past grace? Oh, thou canst not properly call me past grace, for I never enjoyed thee yet. I cannot tell whether I blush or no, but I have now at this time more grace than I can tell what to do with. Who drew thee to this folly? <sighs> oh, who? But the old dotard, my father. Who? When I was honestly married to a civil maid, he persuaded me to leave her. Oh. I was loath at first, but after entreating, urging and offering me large proffers, I, I must confess I was seduced to come a-wooing to thee. My father, villain. I, thy father, Grace, and 
Were he here, I would justify it to the old dotard's face. Wild boy, thou darest not be so impudent. When did I meet thee? Seek or sue to thee? When? Name the day, the month, the hour, the year. Plots, plots. Uh, I can but cry you mercy both. Uh, say that I have done you wrong. I can be but sorry for it. Uh, but indeed, uh, to clear you and lay the fault where it ought to be, all this comes from mine own father in the country, uh, who, hearing that I had married with Luce, sends me word of his blessing to be divorced from her and come a suitor to your daughter. Uh, I think you have his hand and seal to show. My hand and seal? When was that letter writ? Hey, da. Ah. If you get one word more of me tonight, but scurvy looks, I'll give you leave to hang me. Wild boy. Ungracious villain. Treacherous youth? No grace at all. No grace. This is bad company who hath reduced thee. Speak on my blessing, who hath thus misled thee, but no more lies I charge thee. Bad company hath been the shame of me. I was as virtuously given as any youth in Europe, till I fell into one boister's company. Oh, tis he that hath done all the harm upon me. I. Oh. And if he should deny it? What? Then you'd cry him mercy? Oh, I had best bite out my tongue and speak no more what I shall I watch or speak no more. What shall I do? Or what shall I say? There is no heart facing them all. Gentlemen, fathers, wives, or what else? I have wronged you all. I confess it that I have what you would more will any of you rail of me, I'll bear it. Will any of you beat me? So they strike not too hard, I'll <laughs> suffer it. Will any of you challenge me? I'll answer it. What would you have me say or do? Oh, one of these I have married. The other I have betrothed. Yet both maids for me. Will you have me take one and leave t'other? I will. Will you have me keep them both? I will. Perjured, not mine. Oh, what? You here too? <laughs> <laughs> Nay, then I see all my good friends are met together. <sighs> Wilt thou have me loose? I am thy husband, and had I not loved thee better than Grace, I had not disappointed the marriage day tomorrow. Lascivious, no. <sighs> Wilt thou have me, Grace? For had I not loved thee better than Luce, I would never, after I had married her, been contracted to thee. Inconstant, no. <sighs> then, neither married man, widow, nor bachelor, What's to be done? He's even the proverb verified between two stools. The tale goes to ground. Now I bethink me, now I bethink me this. Our meeting here is wondrous strange. Call in the gentlewoman that owns this house. Enter Censor and the wise woman. Censor is now once again like a gentleman. Old shot, I'll chance thee. Here's the marriage proved twixt Luce and Chartley. Which, this was not your promise. Have patience, and in the end we'll pay you all. Your worships are most heartily welcome. I made bold to send for you, and you may see to what end, which was to discover unto you the wild vagaries of this wanton wag pasty, a wild oats I warrant him, and Sir Harry, that your daughter hath escaped this scurring. Thank this gentleman, and then make of him as he deserves. Oh, I remember him. He never pleased my eye so well as now. I know his love, and he in Chartley's place my favour shall possess. 
Thanks, my sweet Grace. And the more inconstant, the inconstant used to spite. I gave her the in Charlie's side. There's one gone already, uh, but this is my wife, and I'll keep her in spite of both of the devil and his dam. Not from her lawful husband. Well, that am I. That is the gentleman, except him loose, and you then, like of her, may I make it good. This gentleman married you visarded. You him disguised, mistaking him for Charlie, which none but my boy Jack was privy to, after she changed her habit with him as you with Jack, and you in Mistress Luce's habit. May I believe you, mother. This be your token. Her that I married, I wrong twice by the finger. Of that token, my hand was sensible. And ere the clamorous and loud noise be gone, I whispered to her thus. You are the man! Thanks, Granham. What thou promised, thou hast done. And leaving him, I take you for my son. Two gone? Then where's the third? This makes me mad. Where is my wife, then? For a wife I had. Not see thy wife? Come hither, Jack, my boy. Nay, take him to thee, and with him all joy. Well, art thou served to be a general scorn to all thy blood? And if not for our sakes, for thy soul's health and credit of the world, have some regarded to me, to me, thy father. Enough, sir. If I should say I would become a new man, you would not take my word. If I should swear I would amend my life, you would not take my oath. If I should bind myself to become an honest man, you would scarce take my bond. I should do none of these. Then see, sir, when to all your judgments I see me pass grace, do I lay hold of grace? And here begin to retire myself. This woman hath lent me a glass in which I see all my imperfections, at which my conscience doth more blush inwardly than my face outwardly. And now I dare confidently undertake for myself, <sighs> I am honest. Then I dare confidently undertake to help you to a wife who desires to have an honest man or none. Look on me well. Simple though I stand here, I am your wife. <laughs> Blush not at your folly, man. Perhaps I have more in me than you expect from me. Knavery and riot, both which are now to me foreign. You and I have been better acquainted, and yet search me not too far, at least, you're shame, least you shame me. Look on me well, nay, better. Better yet, I'll assure you I have left a petticoat when I put on these breeches. What say you now? She scatters her hair. First love! And best beloved. Let me be both, or neither. My boy turned girl, I hope she'll keep my counsel from henceforth. I'll never entertain any servant, but I'll have her searched. Her love hath drawn her hither after him. My loving daughter, welcome. Thou hast run a happy course to see my son thus changed. Father, call me once again your son. Uh, and Sir Harry, me your friend? Censor. A hand, and Mistress Grace, a heart, in honourable love. Where I have wronged you, Luce, forgive. Impute my errors to my youth, not me. With Grace I interchange and embrace. With you, Luce, a passing bus. I wish you all joy. Divide my heart amongst you. Thou, my soul. Nay, Mother Midnight, there's some love for you. Out of thy folly, 
being reputed wise, we, self-conceited, have our follies found. Bear thou the name of all these comic acts, loose, loose, and grace, O oh, covetous man, I see I sought to engross what now sufficeth three. Yet each one wife, enough, one nuptial feast, shall serve three bridles, where be thou chief guest. And they exit. Um... And what we learn here is that it's vitally important when interviewing people uh, for for a position in your household is to uh, strip search them first. Uh, okay. So that which is saying the wise woman will institute in future cases. I, I mean, structurally, there's some really lovely stuff going in here. Uh, the the constant stepping out of one person after another after another, and it's like every time he just digs the hole deeper and it is very very satisfying and once again we have a whisper being used um to uh to uh, uh to effect um and by and large considering how how down we were on the potential of this ending i think haywood kind of did about as well as you can with this kind of conventional ending um if you're gonna have to marry chartley off to lose the second lose at the end and okay i wouldn't have given him the epilogue otherwise you know, we 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 uh, did did kind of okay. Um, uh, so uh, yeah, thoughts um, uh, on on this ending. It's it's not perfect, but for the hand that is dealt, a lot better than I was expecting. Uh, some really good moments in there. Uh, Sarah than Leaky. I th I I think. You could just about make this work by the skin of its teeth. A, a lot of it would come down to the interaction between Second Loose and Chartley. I think the whole thing's going to have to hinge on that, on that reveal and the physicality that you put into um, how they how they react when they're both, you know, when 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 she reveals herself and then he his reaction to her because um he gets off incredibly likely here um but i think depending on on her attitude to him and the kind of physical business you put in of of the, like what's actually happening on stage between the two of them um you know how she's behaving towards him how he's behaving towards her what the body language is whether there's any actual physical interaction um you know there's clearly some kissing going on i think there might be some like you know there could be some of those situations where it's like she kisses him and then immediately smacks him around the head or whatever you know um he could end up you know on his knees begging them all for forgiveness i think you could probably do quite a lot with with the with the physical performance to make this ending fly. I feel this is right on a knife edge. I feel that like, because because all those reveals are so satisfying, I'm kind of willing to forgive an awful lot because he is made to grovel. Um, and so that's kind of obviously fun, given, given the way his character has been built up. Uh, and then how you handle this ending, I think you could make it work with, with lots of kind of stuff that isn't in the, script just sort of adding in lots of stuff and finding lots of stuff in the rehearsal room with the actors and we have also established now i think now that we got to the end of the text that actually nothing has been consummated um and, you know he's if if he was you know that that kind of early modern love rat um then then the the you know there's lots of breach of promises there's lots of social things but he hasn't actually dishonored anyone uh in in that the the, the logic of the world uh that, that we've got here so it's a slightly it's it, it's 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 slightly easier to to forgive him in that sense um, because he hasn't actually committed uh, beyond a certain point in terms of his villainies. Um, it, it's fascinating to see him run out of steam in 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 that whole scene. Um, hey, Dar, I think is is my favourite. <laughs> <laughs> it's like because that's that's one to that's the third one to step out. 
um uh and, and there's, there's two more to follow after that um uh, but that's the one where it's just you know you've just perjured your father and he's and it's just like he, he, he's got nowhere to, after that he does try a bit harder to and he tries to put it on boyster boyster the 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 the, the, the most boring man on the planet <laughs> Uh, yes the ironically named boyster who like i said yesterday doesn't really have a duplicitous bone in his body um yeah Yeah. let's just (laughs) i i was just thinking during that whole sequence it's like oh my god it's homer simpson this is everybody's fault but mine you know Mm. uh anyway uh aliki was next and then I'll, i'll go back to sarah um sarah has said all pretty much everything i was going to say and then you said about the rest um yeah, I I just, I quite like this ending. And I think there's an element of playing with genre in it, where at the end, he's like, well, okay, but if everybody's going to be married off, I have to be married off to somebody. Mm. <laughs> and I just, I found it delightful. Yes, really that, that, that was very meta, wasn't it? He, yeah. he did basically go, um, I, this is how plays end. I, I also just want Harring, Harringfield to just stand, stand there. You know, the character who... <laughs> Who sort of disappeared? <laughs> just going. Who do I marry? <laughs> and he just gets picked up by the wise woman, or the wise woman says, uh, "Would you like to flick through my book of paintings to choose someone?" I've, I've, I, I, you know, swipe yeah. left or right, it's fine, because <laughs> um, uh, we know she has the technology. Um, well, she uh, clearly knows everyone in England. I mean, she like knows <laughs> everybody knows who she is. <laughs> oh yeah, everybody knows the wise woman of Hogston. Of course, yeah. everybody does. I mean, her advertising can be found in every single um... billboard. <laughs> yeah, <box>. yeah. <laughs> I was trying to think of an early modern version of a phone box, and I couldn't yeah. think of one on the fly. <laughs> uh, Sarah. Yeah, I I just wanted to say this is the joy of cold reading because that that hey da that you were talking about, I think that's probably meant to be hey day. Or, yeah, um, that's what I afterwards, thinking. after I'd said it, I thought, oh, that should have been heyday. But because I was cold reading it, I was just like, oh, yeah, hey, hey, da, hi, 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 dad. Um, and this is the what? this is the joy of cold reading, actually, because you do you do pull things, um, you do find things, you, you kind of stumble mistakenly into things that actually. Because I think if I was directing that, that is how I would get the actor to play that line, even though I'm fairly certain it's meant to be Hey Day, because that's just like, oh, yeah, hey, Pop. Um, yeah, sorry about that, mate. Because, <laughs> mm. yeah, it was just one of those little things. But I'm fairly certain it is Hey Day, would you say? I don't know. Actually, I have a... But a why? What, um, why couldn't it be Hey Day? <laughs> um, yes, well, I mean, you, we, we are always suspicious of these texts, and the, the, yeah. the, we have come across uh, uh, quite a few unforced errors in places. So uh, it, it could be a typo, but even if it is, a, it isn't a typo. It's 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 good either way. I don't care. He's dead. Um, uh, Lynn. <laughs> well, if I may indulge in a bit of super nerdery um, for a moment, I suspect it, my guess would be it's actually both. We are in the middle of the Great Vowel Shift, and so the difference between. Hey da and hoy day might have been very very slight in terms of the actual pronunciation. We kind of have to make a choice um, because the pronunciation has has settled in a in a different way than it was being practiced at the time. But I I think it's kind of a pun that it, it, it's hey day hey da they that that they might have been virtually undistinguishable at the time. Uh, okay, so other thoughts about the close of the play. Uh, I'd say it, uh, it is, I'd say, about as satisfying as I think you can from the setup of the play. Um, and if we take it within the, the context of its times, and I'd say maybe maybe give a uh, an extra epilogue to somebody else or, or, or shift that. But, I mean, Chartley is so central to the play. I don't think you can destabilise him too much um, because, you know, he is the central figure... He is the part that the the, the 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 main actor of the company, I'm sure, would have been vying for. Um, uh, so, so I I, I do uh, wonder about that. Uh, uh, other thoughts on the close of the play before we go into final thoughts. I see pensive looks. Dan is almost thinking, thinking of waving. Are you, are you, are you any, any, any anything else, Dan? It's not. I, I really can't. I really shouldn't say because I wasn't here for the, the first the first two days of it. So. But just from this part, I wouldn't know why you would want to. 
I guess, destabilize him because it's more fun as far as he goes for him to get his comeuppance. If he only goes halfway, well, then what's the point of it, really? It's not as bad then whenever he's done in it. Mm-hmm. I, it it's, it's all the funnier that he's getting that he's getting called out by everybody and anybody and everybody at the end mm-hmm. there. Uh, yeah, uh, Alan. I have a feeling that a lot of what Charlie says in that final sequence is done with his fingers crossed behind his back. Mm. I don't trust him as far as I can throw up. Mm. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, the, the, there are the little issues with the, the, the clothes in the sense of the, the reveal of Second Loose, um, uh, you know, because, of course, they, they hand the boy to Charlie and you sort of have this gay panic moment. Um, uh, but you do then get the wonderful shampoo commercial flicking back of the hair <laughs> um, moment, which I, I, I kind of feel needs a sound effect to go with it. Um, but I think those are those are relatively minor massageable uh, things for a modern audience. Uh, Sarah. Yes, I mean, I, I, I think this is this is why the, the how you how you physically stage the relationship between them at the end is so important. Because I mean, yes, absolutely, you, you're you're not you're not you can't credibly ask your audience to believe that this man has suddenly got gone through a massive change of character. He's saying what he needs to say because he's run out of options, <laughs> um, and he's actually suddenly come out of this way better than he thought he was going to and so i think you can you can plausibly imbue him with a sense of relief uh, a sense of heartfelt like wow i am a lucky bugger i've come out of this Whew, wow okay i need to just be a bit more careful now uh, i maybe need to change my ways a bit but you are, but he absolutely hasn't undergone um you know, you, you, I think it would be a mistake to play this as if he has absolutely gone a, a, a full and sincere change of heart because he is who he is. And that's why the what, what happens on stage, the physical business between him and Second Loose is so important because you can convey so much through that. Like, it has to be very clear that she is going to be the one in charge of this relationship. Um, and that, you know, she is going to have her own version of a happy ending because frankly why would she want to marry him but she does and so you know you find a way to make that work um because he's 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 always going to be a ne'er-do-well he's always going to probably be that 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 guy but she loves him so that's 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 their happy ending Okay, uh, time for final thoughts uh, for those who've been here for uh, the the duration of the process and those who've just popped in to be bemused, bothered and bewildered. Um, uh, so, uh, Lynn, uh, final thoughts about the play overall? Um, maybe because I was setting everyone up for to, to, to really hate the ending of the play that we've managed to, uh, you know, uh, push expectations so that you, people just land a little further the other way. Um, how's the play overall for you? Final thoughts? Well, um, yeah, I, 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 I very much agree with what you, Rob, and what Sarah said about the ending, that that it's handled about as well as you um, might hope for. It's as persuasive as uh, as it could be. It is kind of on that knife edge of, mm, yeah, you you could make it work, but it's but um but it's not a slam dunk. Making this selling this, uh, yeah, but you know it's so it's so comically rich in this that last scene with everybody like hiding behind furniture or behind doors or like poking their heads and going uh-huh now he's got trying to blame me oh so funny so it's definitely worth yeah it's definitely worth a, a, a go because it's it's it because the the comedy in it is just is is gold at moments and i think i'm really interested in the thread of the sort of social world that um that Haywood has created. I said something about this in the first or second day. This sort of recreates that world where, where your credit with your neighbors and your reputation is everything. And I think if you could somehow establish that as the world that we live in, and that Chartley, either because he's not very bright or he's never had to, um, he's never had to actually suffer any consequences, or he's really young, maybe he's only like 17, um, he just doesn't get that that you've got to live in the world with other people. And that's actually not that I'm going to be a good person now. Um, 
But what he comes to realize in this last scene is that actions have consequences and you have to live in the world with other people. Um, and, you know, and your, your, your father is another person and, you, you know, and he, and it turns out he does kind of care what, what the world thinks of him. He wants to be able to function socially. Uh, so now he realizes that he's, he's got to grow up and even though it might go against his natural grain to be a ne'er-do-well, he, he needs to kind of toe the line. Uh, so, which is, you know, maybe not the, the sort of idealistic, um, he now is a good person kind of ending that we might long for but i think it's it's very early modern it's really not about right and wrong it's about it's about getting along with your neighbors it's about existing in in the social world uh, and maybe that's the lesson that that chartley learns mm. uh elizabeth you've you've only here for this session so they're, they're, you're fantastically in the dark uh how did you enjoy <laughs> the ending of this play <laughs> i think <clears throat> i think it ended quite well um i'm usually one of those people who's like kill him he's not he has upset the moral center of this thing but i don't know if this thing has a moral center so much <laughs> i think it's more about the wise woman of foxton and about the fact that she can do anything and be absolutely everything to all people and i like that i really like that it's all about a woman and um i i know the narrative is not about her as such she's just kind of like the upon eponym but I, I like her a lot and I liked Gratiana as well. I really enjoyed the three ingenues were great. And I felt like they had some agency, you know, they had some, some voice, which I liked a lot as well. So I enjoyed the last little third of this. Hmm. I mean, it's something interesting about the writing for all of the, 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 the female characters in this uh, text. I mean, I don't think word for, you know, line wise, they get as much to say. Uh, I don't think statistically, if we did a breakdown, they, they actually have a lot to say. Um, I, I think some are better drawn than others, but there, there is something going on here. Uh, with, with And the wise woman is, is, is a very nice... I want more wise woman. I'm, I'm with Sarah on this one. Um, just a soupçon more wise woman, because <laughs> after after Act 2 uh, and Act 3, uh, uh, the, 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 there isn't much, and, and very much just turns on and waves the fairy fairy dust and i i just feel that there's we're a set piece light i want another set piece for the wise woman uh because i think they deserve it um sarah any final thoughts as you're waving give her an epilogue mm, give give yeah. her the last word because i actually that is the one thing about the play i feel that charlie should not have the last word mm. um i she should absolutely come in at the end she is the deus ex machina you know, she she should absolutely come on. We were talking at the uh, end of the first session about how she does that thing where she breaks the fourth wall and talks to the audience and has a bit of business with them. She should absolutely wrap up the play and do the same thing there, I feel. So I feel she needs a, an epilogue writing for her. Um, my, my final thoughts are mainly about how to practically stage this because I'm keen. Um, and I'm 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 looking at the cast list now, and I, I haven't really had the opportunity to sort of go go through it. But I'm thinking you could cut Harringfield definitely. I think you can. I think you could double him um, actually quite effectively. Um, Maybe uh, yeah, because he 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 disappears. I think he's useful for that first scene. I don't think you need to get rid of him as a character. I'm looking of actually you could get it down to about twelve, um, mm. which isn't bad, uh, and I wouldn't want to try and do it less. So you have mm. quite a few peripheral characters who could double. That's just a guesstimate, yeah. but um, yeah. yeah, sorry, carry on. Well, I was just thinking, you know, you could write him out altogether because he doesn't he doesn't serve much of a function. Um, but then, I kind of having him there at the end as the only one who wasn't married, bless him. Like, I mean, that yeah, that you could do something with that. I don't know, but I I just um, yeah. I've said a lot about this play already, so I won't say much more. I just really enjoyed it. Um, it surprised me. Um, and I, yeah, it's left me with a smile on my face. And I, I thought what Lynn was saying was really insightful about, you know, this this is the actual takeaway from the play about how you've got to get on with your neighbours. And if you could, there was some way you could kind of, but you could build that into the, actually you could build that into the wise woman's epilogue. 
you know, this this is the moral of the tale and kind of do it in a funny way. Mm. Um, and yeah, I, I would really like to do a second look on this or, or workshop it because um, I, I feel there's a lot of potential of this in this to get it staged. And someone was saying again, I think it might have been Lynn was saying yesterday that, you know, <clears throat> thinking about how the audience are when they leave a production, when they leave the, the auditorium, how do you want them to feel? And this is actually one of the, one of the few early modern comedies that I'm actually walking away from with a smile on my face. Mm. You know, it, that's that's really rare. So um, I, I, this is one that has to go to the top of the pile to be staged, I think. Uh, well, and uh, just following on from your your point about the epilogue, I, I I think we can give her a prologue as well. I I think if we really bookend, uh, and that also just sets it in context. So you know that, that question is a play. This is a play that feels you know it would be a, probably a mistake to try and update it or set it too much in the modern times. It's very much of its period, and if you can bookend it a bit with someone who's who's a bit aware of this is a play. This is a play written four hundred odd years ago. Um, then that that makes it function even better as well, uh, and it does help that nobody does any. I mean, it's a talk of murder, but you know who doesn't talk of murder? Uh, uh, and uh, anyway, sorry, um, Dan, you've only been here for this session. Any final thoughts? I agree with Sarah. I thought this was a really fun play. I mean, from what I've read, I walked to. I mean, the thing about it is, for me, is it, it's 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 intelligent. It's wittily written. It moves at a fast pace. Somehow he's turned this really naughty situation to something where I'm able to follow it if it's staged well. And I, I and I have full confidence that you can just see that Haywood just is a man of the theater and knows what he's doing to be able to, to take to, 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 I guess, untie all those knots at the end there and have a neat, tidy ending, even though we may not like necessarily the type of character Charlie is, I, I don't really have a problem with that. I, I, I don't want clean cut characters anyway. And I think it makes it more fun that he's such a, he's such a rogue. Um, and I think that for me, at least that this might be a lot of fun, but it's not necessarily a stoop. It's just not just something frothy. I think that there is definitely deeper things going on here that it does make you think about, I guess, your own morals and your own bad acts in life. And I think by, exaggerating by creating these i guess the most extreme situations and you're able to laugh at them it, it helps you to reflect even more maybe on i guess if you want to take a moral away on what it is that happens in the real world there and so i don't think we need to i what i like about haywood especially is that he's not heavy-handed about it either um so yeah i i i quite liked it i wasn't there for the first two but it ends it ended very well uh alan any final thoughts yeah i mean it was rather more satisfying than i was fearing at one or two points i think the idea of giving uh certainly an epilogue to the wise woman would make it work the one bit i found difficult to make credible was chartley's reformed character at the end that just struck me that that required a leap of faith too far um, but there's some darn good material in there and very little that seemed to need cutting either for reasons of length or for tone. Mm. Uh, apart the, from that very brief sequence yesterday where for some reason the standard early modern racism crept in. Yes, Act 4, Scene 2 is going to get some revision. Um, it's, even for a second look, I'm, I'm just, we're just not going to go go there. Um, uh, it's it, it, it just, yeah, tonally is all uh, uh, over the shop. Uh, Dan? Just wanted to add, and I, I wrote in the chat, um, the line, I've now realised for the first time in my life the, the vital importance of being earnest. Jack's <laughs> line at the end there. And I really do feel like, I mean, you don't, you're not believing for a second that this guy is reformed and everything works out for him at the end, you know, after all of his, all of his antics. And I think that's okay because why, do, why does he need to be reformed or why do we need to think that anyway? I mean, is that really the point of it, hmm. of, of the play? 
as long as he conforms, uh, I think that's probably the the, 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 the message of the play. Um, Eric, uh, here for the beginning in at the death. Any final thoughts? I don't know. Like, I mean, I loved the beginning because of the, you know, the energetic characters and stuff. But then I think I'm with Alan on the sort of I don't believe him for a second. So it's kind of like kill him <laughs> or just like make him pay in some way but maybe i'm just too too vindictive um want to throw tomatoes at him or something um i don't know but i, I did enjoy the fact that like although okay maybe i wasn't here for the session yesterday but i like that the wise woman outsources her job to jack well sort of outsources her job to loose uh second loose who is basically first loose and then um it, chronologically speaking, which is totally not a mindfuck. Um, and then sort of goes, oh, yeah, you're going to help me do this. Uh, <laughs> there's no real, like, um, and she does it to get rid of Charlie, actually, not to sort of help him along in any way, which is quite, I don't know. I'm intrigued. I, mm. I would watch it as a comedy, though. Mm. Uh, Aliki, any final thoughts? I I absolutely loved this. I it's gone straight to the near the top of my list. I don't know, it's in my top two or three comedies we've done. I I, I you know, if you said let's go rehearse it tomorrow, I'd be up for it. I think it's great. Um it, it doesn't really need anything except cutting those lines from scene 4, which is only like 12 lines. Other than that, it all works. It all works for a modern audience. The jokes land. We get the nuances. It's uh, I think it's a delight. It, 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 clockwork plot, so put, perfectly put together. Mm. Yeah, big fan. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the first, the, it's interesting structurally that those first two acts, we were, you know, were very, very structured you could see the structure and then into these acts it's still structured but it's a lot looser there's more scenes flowing into each other but it's all perfectly put together um and you know this is this is someone who's who he does make the ending land for once does not break lynn's heart um as as hayward tends to do the endings uh, are, are are variable uh, I think it's fair to say. Oh, ha ha Thomas Hayward is variable. I mean, sometimes he's absolutely brilliant, and then sometimes it's just, oh no, no, go, no, put it back in his box, go, get out. Uh, so yeah, I, 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 I think it's an excellent uh, uh, play on the whole. Um, yeah, some some adjustments, um, but nothing that a good rehearsal period won't put to rights. Not even too long. It's a little long in places, but you know, not in any meaningful way. Um, considerably but harder. also it's just got to be machine gunned oh yeah like, yeah so so it'll move fast as well i mean it's a okay. it's a fast mover there's there's very little grandstanding that's going to slow it down i mean chartley when he's tap dancing he is tap dancing he is <laughs> working away on his thing he's not slowing the pace um even when he's got those big big chunky speeches uh eric yeah well i'm wondering is like maybe if we had done that last scene like from beginning to end Rather than paused in the middle, uh, there's a part of me going, would that have changed my view of like this scene just because, you know, like that ending as well, just like that final resolution of the plot, because it, it is meant to hit, the way I understand it, it's meant to hit you like, you know, a train uh, or, well, with the early modern equivalent. Um, and um, if it doesn't go fast enough, then you kind of, although you're meant to gather all the details on the way, obviously, then you can't, you don't have time to really think about it. Mm. Uh, okay, right. Well, I think uh, we can commend the wise woman uh, of Hogston uh, and all her fellows. Um, I mean, you know, it's printed in 16... 38 so she probably gets hanged as a witch in about 10 years time um but you know it's uh, that that that's the early modern period for you all that remains is to thank all the wonderful readers for all the wonderful reading thank you very much everyone and goodbye lascivious no